Outdoors with Ted Ellenbecker, the freshwater angler's number one source for information. Interesting, informative, at times controversial, but always delivering information that can help make your next outing the best. Your host for today's show, Ted Ellenbecker. Hey everybody, how you doing today? I am really glad you're here. This is a great show and it was a lot of fun to do. Went to the Red River fishing with a buddy of mine, Brad Durick, chasing some big channel cats. We got kind of a special segment here for you today. We actually targeted the IGFA men's four pound line class world record channel cat. You're going to get to see this, all right? Great body of water, great channel cats. I'll tell you what, because we're ultra light fishing here, we had to pick certain structures with certain elements and minus certain elements because you can't fish log jams when you're fishing two pound and four pound line. You just can't do it. The fish are going to break you off. So I'm going to have Brad come in here in a second, talk to you a little bit about the elements that he picked for us because he knew the situation and what we were going to have to deal with. So I was working with Ted last year in Des Moines at Catfish University and we got talking about the Drayton stretch of the Red River which is about an hour north of Grand Forks and Ted went on to tell me that he was searching for the four pound line class record channel cat and asked if this would be a good shot to go after that record and I said yeah I think as bad a good a shot as any of breaking 17 pounds with four pound line would be probably September the guiding season gets a little bit slower I can fit you in and we can uh, go after that record so we discussed this for a couple months before he came and then one of the last discussions we had he reminded me that when a catfish runs and takes four pound line into a snag pile, things change and you usually lose the fish. Well, that changed an element. That eliminated almost 75% of the water I like to fish. Not because it's full of snag piles and wood, but because there might be some snag piles and wood nearby. So we had to be very selective about the spots we chose. And lucky for me, one of my big fish spots has absolutely zero wood even close to it. And that's where we went to chase our fish, and that's where we ultimately got our fish. This is going to be a great day. I'm with Brad Durick. We're on the river. We're fishing some great channel cats. And this, uh, we're doing a lot of things today, guys. We're looking for an IGFA four-pound line class record. We're filming the video for you. We're going to give you some information that's going to help you on your next outing. And more importantly, we're just going to have some fun. We just got set up. We caught one little fish already, so it's really a good sign. And as we get, as we get a little more organized, I'm going to have Brad talk to you a little bit. Maybe I can talk him into giving you a few of his secrets even on this river, okay? All right, so we're going to finish setting up, and then we're going to come back. Here we got him. All right. Got up here under the boat already. How big are you? He, I don't think he knows he's hooked yet. There he's not very big. How big? Are you? When you're fighting fish on these ultralights, one thing you really have to concentrate on is allowing the equipment to fight the fish. You can't beat the fish on the ultralight line. You have a good drag setting, a good rod, proper line, and good knots, and let the equipment beat the fish for you. That's the only way to do it. Be patient. We got one on. I don't think he's that big, but you still have to be patient. You don't know how big they are until they come up. Oh, he's just a little guy. All right, well, now that you know what we're dealing with here a little bit, we went to the first spot Brad had picked out, and we caught a small fish, and he said, you know what? I know the place we got to go. We went up to the second spot. We hooked into another fish that was better, but then we got the hit we wanted, and away we went. Watch this. An hour later, you're going to get to see the fish. What did we do? That, that's a fish. <laughs> That's Kermie. I'm gonna get the set this down and get these lo yep. other lines yep. out. Yep. You betcha. All right, catch us up to speed here. We had a little debacle with two fish on at the same time. Well, we got, yeah, we had a smaller fish on. Now we got a bigger fish, and he is spilling the drag. 
was this is going to be a better fish i mean obviously we can't say this is going to be the the big fish but he he's a better fish and this one's going to take a while brad this 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 is going to end up being a half hour fight here or better i can feel that right now because I, i'm feeling the weight on it so might as well make some peanut butter sandwiches and settle in again we're clear the only thing we got is a drift sock when it gets closer we might have to move in fact, I can move it now if you want to. Mm, well, I think we're all right. For now. He's right straight behind the boat. Well, he's got a little bit of current to work with, too, but he's going to come back over on your side, I think. And let the, like we talked before, let the equipment fight these animals. You cannot hurry them. It is a patience thing. The boy, when you get them in the boat, it's worth it, especially the big guys. It may not be the record fish, but this is a good fish on ultralight. This fish just stalled out again. We got him up beside the boat, but he's stalling out right down underneath us. We got the drift socks out of the way, got the other rods out. He's using the current just a bit. And he's taking drag again. And this is, on the frog, it makes a fish commit. A fish that doesn't want to commit to the big take will take a lot of times when you add in the strike stimulators. And that's what we did here. We got a nice fish on. And he's going backwards again a little bit. There he goes. What's it? This is where the patience comes in. This is where a lot of people really mess up on these ultralights. They get impatient, the fish gets close to the boat, and they think they can start putting too much pressure on him, or they put more pressure on him, and it can cause you problems. You need to just relax and let the, let the equipment fight this fish, and he will come up for you, but you got to be patient. This fish has some weight. Obviously, I can't tell you how much, but he's going to go over 10. I, I will say that. He is going to go over 10. And he knows how to use the current. He's got his head down, tail up, facing into the current. It's kind of like a wedge. He's pull, he's just he's using it really well. How big did they get up here? Biggest of the year is 25 and a half so far for this boat. Well, we don't don't need him that big. The longest fight I've had was a little over four hours. And that was on two pound line though too. This is four and once they start getting tired it, it does make a difference because I, I mean I'm actually putting pressure on him you know I'm feeling I'm actually feeling the pressure in my arm so he's feeling it too. A little soft to let the rod do the work and not your drag. Absolutely absolutely it's a shock absorber especially on the, on the light line it just well, and, and with mono, too, a lot of people don't like the stretch, but the stretch is actually the forgiveness in case something goes wrong. It is. <laughs> yes, it is. And forgiveness is a good thing. Um, yeah, it's just like when the fish get tied up on the boat, even on heavier line, they get up close to the boat, and then they do that explosive takeoff. That, that mono will give you a little bit of that stretch. Right. And, and it's just, it's like a bungee cord. It, it just, yep. it's forgiving. Okay. The other thing you want to watch when you're fishing these ultralights like this, you don't want to bring that fish all the way up to the top of the surface to where, to where he's laying on top of the water. Then you're dealing with dead weight. You're also restricting uh, the shock absorption of all your equipment because your line is so short. So you want to get him up to where you can get a look if you want, but you don't want to bring him up to where he's splashing around and rolling on top. That's going to break you off. His head shakes have changed. They're not big and sweeping. They're a little jerkier, a little shorter. Uh, and when he does it, I also gain a foot or two of line on him every time he does it. So he's starting to get a little fatigued. That's good. Uh, but, but we're still a ways away. We just crossed the half hour mark on this fish. And, uh, well, it could be a while yet. It looks like it's going to be. I'm hoping when he comes up, he doesn't take off and take 50 yards of line back out. Uh, 
We'll have to wait and see how it, just how, see how it plays out. He's a good fish though. It could be the fish. Just because we're getting up to where we're really tight, we're almost in contact with this fish. He's gonna take off. He could do a real explosive run on us and I don't want that drag tightened down on him. So I'm actually being a little softer on him right now than I was when he was further away from the boat. He's starting to move easier, Brad. Really? Yep. I know, you're hearing the drag too, but he is starting to move a little easier. So tell us our options here. Our options? Okay, we can sit here and let him fight for a little bit, which probably a good idea just because, believe it or not, he is getting tired. He is exerting energy just like I am. He's pulling against this rod just as hard as I am. Uh, but he's also utilizing the current, and we may have to, well, we just may have to drift with him a touch just to get him vertical so we can, and take the current away from him so we can get him to come up a little bit and get a hold of that shock leader. That's kind of our options. Right now though, I'm kind of comfortable with this because he's not causing any damage. Um, and we do seem to gain a little bit on him. Heartbreaker? Yeah, I know. 17.6. 17, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That would be a heartbreaker. Yeah. Yeah, so now he's coming up beside the boat. We haven't had him here before, so. Now he's going past the boat. <laughs> Now we can use the current to our favor. He's swimming against the current and I'm pulling him back. Ted, you take kayak catfishing to a whole new level using a 19 foot boat. Yeah. Okay, well, now at this point in time, I think I have to tell you, you know, we've been on this fish for almost an hour, over 55 minutes now. And we finally got the fish to the top. Brad set the camera down, and that's what he needed to do, okay? We had this fish back up on the top now. He set it down and grabbed the net. So I guess is what I'm saying is, we don't have the actual netting on film for you, but as soon as he hits the bottom of the boat, we're back on it. So here you go, you get to watch the weight, see a great fish. This was an incredible fish fight. 58 minutes, great fish, IGFA, four pound line class men's world record. Kermit. Show us what, you, what we've been working on here. Four pound line, actually 3.7 pound, four pound line class. Fish took about, about an hour, I think, didn't he? Close to an hour, yep. Just sit still. Sit still, sit still. Come on. Eighteen and a quarter. This is an IGFA world record. The weight on the ground, 18.25, 18 and a quarter. On the 30 pound boga scale. Great fish, 34 inches long, guys. Four pound line class. We got him, Brad. <laughs> Woo! Woo All right, let's take care of this big boy. All right, Ted. Took us an hour, third spot. Oh yeah, our commercial. 56 minutes. First world record on the pure gold bait booster. We targeted the fish. Brad and I came out here. He helped me out on this one. We targeted the fish. We got the men's four pound line class channel cat. IGFA world record today, 18.25 pounds. Perfect morning, perfect morning. There we go, come on. Just let it rest a minute. 
Yeah, she's resting. Wow. Couldn't ask for that to go better. We really couldn't have. That was perfect. We aim to please there here at go. Brad Derrick Outdoors. There we go. Woohoo! Thanks, Brad. We got her. All right. So we've had a lot of fronts moving through on top of each other. And I have been noticing each day the fish are getting a little bit more moody. Now coming into today, I hadn't fished in a couple of days. Knowing that we were going to be dealing with moody fish, we've had to actually take a step. We've had to look at the off current side, which the conditions say look to it out of the current a little bit. Uh, the fish are going to be sluggish because they don't really know what end is up just because of lack of stability. This hurricane on the east coast is obviously raising some cane everywhere in the United States right now. Um, <clears throat> so we started with the out of the current. We had one fish, then we ended up with nothing on the second spot, but we started experimenting out. Now what we've determined is the fish are basically in the middle of the river in the middle of the holes so they're not aggressively feeding at the head of the holes they're more in the middle of the holes but if you put the right bait in front of them they're going to take it so that's what we're working with now we're plugging our way through uh we're dealing with what it is i believe we've got a pattern established now it's just a matter of ironing it out putting in the time and grinding out on them a couple days of stable weather this is going to come around you know another element that comes to mind is the pressure this week appears to have been pretty stiff in the couple days that I wasn't here. I mean, it's rare for me to pull in and see six trailers at the boat ramp at the beginning of a day. So we are contending with some pressure that I'm not used to dealing with, but I believe we're far enough out now that we're getting into some fresh water. It's a fish. Oh. He's Oop. doing the eight pound roll. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's doing the eight pound roll. Not as good as the last one. Coming around the other way here, bud. There you go. Yep. Five to eight pounds. Okay. This one was inside bend. As I say, I said they were like him. He's swimming to me. I don't think he's a monster. But they've definitely uh, are out of the current on the inside current, a little on the soft side. And they are liking frog by the look of it. I don't even think I need a net on this dude. Oh, I'm going to. He's nice for fish. Yeah. We've been here probably about two minutes, which is how I like it to be. Little dude, but it's a fish. One nice thing about frogs for bait, you can recycle them pretty easy. That's an easy way to release a fish. Ron! <laughs> That's another good fish. <laughs> he just took direct. Holy cow, he just. Oh, just shoot. I'm swimming to ya. He's a nice fish. He's gonna be second big fish of the day. Yep, he's the second big fish of the day. Yeah, well, I had the big fish of the day on and watched it. But he's, he's like maybe a six or seven. Let's see if I can shoot video and net at the same time. Oh, no. Oh, he's a baby. Never mind.
I exaggerate really well, don't I? <laughs> oh, look, look at him though, he's pretty. Oh man, he's a nice fish. Here, we'll show him off and then I'll take him off. He's a nice fish, pretty colored. Nice little creature. Get him on hook and get him back in there. There, that makes it much easier. That could have been bad. Come on, I'm gonna go there. We go. Voila! One more. Oh, look at that! Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Uh oh! Oh, I didn't oh look at that! There we go. That's a good one. Yeah, look at him. Beautiful. I think I should net that out. Alright, come here, fish. Ready? Oh, that was good. Nice fish. Oh, ho, ho, Lou. That's what I'm talking about. There you go. Hey Brad. Nice. Hi. Nice. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't too bad. Oh, look at the head on that fish. Maybe 15 to 16 ish. He's long though, so you never know. Woo! Nice fish. Very nice fish. Look at that. Beautiful fish. Beautiful fish. Alright. There you go, buddy. And you ready? Yep. So that was the one I marked. That was the one you marked? That was the one I called for you right there. This is a good way to end the day right here, Brad. I think. You just had a good fish and this fish is pretty decent. Oh yeah. Middle size, middle of the road. Good, decent fish. Not good, but decent. You know what? It's not bad for pulling into a spot, putting a 20 minute timer on and popping out two fish. Because that's exactly what we did. Yep. Oh, you got teeth on you, don't you, you little booger? Pretty colored. High fish. It's a good looking fish. Yeah. Alright. Well, hey, that about does it. What a great way to end the day with another fish. Brad got his big fish. We got our big fish. We did get the targets we were looking for. We got some good video. We got to test out the bait booster, which worked extremely well for us. We got the IGFA four pound line class men's record, which was the targeted fish. We couldn't ask for a better day. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that we gave you some information that might help you on your next outing, because we hope your next outing's the best. From everyone here at Outdoors with Ted Ellenbecker, thank you for joining us today. Safe travels, and may your next outing be the best.